Hi everyone, my name is Nadine Gilkison and today I'm going to be talking about core creation with Canva. Now when I talk about this topic, what I mean is student creation. So we always want to maximize any time that we can um, what the student is creating on a device rather than just consuming. And I'm going to be giving you practical ways that you can integrate Canva into that process. So I'm currently the District Technology Integration Supervisor for Franklin Township Schools, which is located on the southeast side of Indianapolis, Indiana. I have a true passion for educational technology and anytime I get a chance to help out teachers, help them with their students with ed tech, I absolutely love it. So when we talk about Canva, I often tell teachers it's kind of like the smartphone of ed tech tools. So when we think about a smartphone, um, back in the day, um, before they existed or when they were starting to roll out, we may have also had additional devices in addition to our smartphone. Um, I remember at one point we owned a GPS um, product. I had additional cameras, video cameras, all these different things. And slowly, as smartphones got better, then you didn't have to have those additional things. It was already built in. That's the way I like to talk about Canva because Canva does so much. Um, when I think over the years, as I was communicating different ways to create on devices, I would often have to talk about five, six, eight different tools because one tool was really good at one thing and another one was really good at something else. Um, but honestly, Canva does it all from videos, website creation, presentations, um, invitation certificates, infographics, I could go on and on. Really, there's no need for me to recommend anything outside of it because this platform does it all for students. But I get it. Usually when I talk about this topic, um, it's either that a teacher has used Canva or they have not. And when I'm saying, hey, this would be really great to um, have your students use Canva, I get teachers that may be apprehensive about it because their initial reaction is, yeah, but, but I don't know Canva. I, I don't know it very well, and yet you're telling me to have my students use it. Um, hopefully by the end of this PD, you'll feel more comfortable. The first thing that I can tell you is you don't need to be an expert in Canva to let your students use it. In this digital age, kids pick up so quickly what they need to do on um, any type of platform, and we need to give them an opportunity to play and learn how to use the platform themselves. I'll give you some additional strategies as we get going, but I wanted to hit this off right away by telling you, you don't need to be an expert in Canva. So let's say that now that I've kind of covered that aspect, you are ready to roll out Canva to your students, but you're not sure how to do that. Um, here's my advice. I've kind of given you a breakdown list. Um, think about a Canva project that's aligned to your standards. So no matter the time of year, think about something currently um, that you would be doing in your classroom, asking your students to show what they know in some facet. Um, and typically we ask kids to do a presentation. It could be something in Google Slides. Um, and when we roll out Canva, we can think about how it's aligned to our standards and we can also determine that workflow path. We can determine like how long is a project going to be. Um, and then the next step is I have to give them opportunities to play. If I don't and the kids aren't as familiar with the platform, you're going to be trying to push out the project and they're not going to be focusing on the project. They're going to be playing around. Um, a lot of times what I tell people to do is if you have an opportunity before your class is getting started, a lot of times teachers will have a bell ringer, morning work, something like that to get the kids going. Instead of doing something like that, give them a generic topic of something that you want them to play around in Canva with. That way you're not eating up a ton of your um, instructional time then you're ready to go as you start to roll out the project. Um, you can determine what, what Canvas skills that somebody may need to model for the students. 
if you know that there's a certain thing that all kids are struggling with, I wanna give you a solution because as I said, you don't need to be the expert in Canva. Your kids are gonna learn this really quick and pay attention to those that are kind of like your Canva experts. Um, if you're in the lower grades, I could literally have like a lanyard that says, you know, something like Canva expert, and then that way the students know who they could go to. It doesn't have to be a badge, it's just an idea. Um, but basically what I'm saying is lean on students to help you out with this. It doesn't have to be that you are always the person teaching them. Um, the last thing I'm gonna mention is that when you decide to roll a project out and the kids get to use Canva, something I always did when I was in the classroom, um, I think back to whenever I would teach writing and how they stress having mentored text. Um, basically, you know, writing examples to go back and show students what it is that you're looking for. I then started to use that model whenever I did any kind of project with technology. Curate mentor tech. If you have great projects that come out of this, keep, not every project, but keep a handful of them. So then the next year that you're rolling out that project, you have some samples to show them what you're looking for. Um, and, you know, again, focus on the standard that you want them to show their depth of knowledge, all right? A lot of people question about how they're going to grade it and how they're going to you know, analyze what they're looking for and oh great, if they're gonna use Canva and they're gonna use these different things, then I need to have a rubric for each different style and type of option that they could choose in Canva. And that's this is the big key item that I want people to know. Focus on the standard. Your rubric is whatever standard that you're trying to find out if the student can show you their depth of knowledge. So, it's not about having to focus on what option to choose that they show what they know. It's not about you know delineating that. Again, always focus on the standard, the outcome of what you want a kid to show you. So a lot of people then start to ask me, what's an effective way to collect their work? Um, especially if you're going to give kids options, and again, let's say you're not familiar with the platform, the kids have to know how to get their work to you. So I wanna give you a couple of options with this. Um, so inside of Canva, you can literally either pull up this slide or pull up Canva itself, and it's really three steps. So when they want to share it with you, in the uh, top right-hand corner, they're gonna tap on share, and when they tap on share, they're going to select more. Under more, there's going to be an option that says view only link. So then the kid can literally copy that link and they can paste it into something in Google Classroom for their assignment. They can paste it into Canvas um, if you're using Canvas and you want the kid to turn in an assignment. But I also wanna give you a third option with that. Um, it's always, you know, getting that view only link and they're gonna copy that link. But this is an option that you could consider. If you want all students to be able to like see each other's project, we think about, you know, all these kids getting up in front of the class and they're gonna have to do like an oral presentation. Well, let's say you had a model where you wanted to collect all the students' work and not only you can look at it, but the students can look at the projects in like a showcase format or even to give feedback to others. Um, use a Google form. If you use a Google form and all the kids are inserting their links, it's going to push out a Google Sheet that has all the links on it. And then the students can see everyone's projects. And honestly, um, if you want a quick way to gather all of their projects together, a Google Form is a great way to do that as well. So um, now that I've covered that, um, I do wanna share some Canva creation ideas that are really beyond a presentation. We all know that we can use it for presentations and it's fabulous for that. But I tried to come up with, I think I've got 15 different options that you could consider. And I really designed this so that if you wanna show it to your students, so that they can see what these different options are, um, then they can take a look at it as well. 
Now, one thing that I've done on many of these, you notice that they're active links that are inside of this. And so what this is going to do, we know that there's a video option, but inside of video, there's tons of templates. And really that's the beauty of using Canva is that rather than a student starting from a blank page, a blank slide or whatever, really tapping into the templates that are already there is going to cut down the amount of time that you need to give students to get something done. Um, so video, there's all kinds of options. Claymation and stop motion actually are inside of Canva and you would think it would be under the video category, but I actually found those templates inside of the presentation options. And it will literally walk students through how to uh, do something in claymation, how to do something in stop motion. Um, games, okay, they have game shows, game boards, all different types of games. So if the student is wanting to show what they know and they wanna design a game board, they wanna design like a whole interactive game show experience, um, they've got tons of templates inside of there as well. Learning bentos. Um, bento boxes are really popular um, with having students kind of chunk what they know in that type of a format, and they could create a learning bento inside of Canva. Doing a digital magazine, um, they have all kinds of magazine templates. Um, when I put social media, I want you to know, I'm not saying have them actually post out on social media. It's they have tons of templates that look like social media. Um, you know, kids are all into TikTok and, um, and Instagram as well. And you can tap into templates on Canva that give that appearance like if they were going to put it on one of those platforms. And I know that would ramp up student engagement if you gave them that as an option. Um, if they need a bigger project, then just know that Canva even has website templates on here. Um, creating a poster, a flip book, they can do comic strips, infographics, um, the ability for a student to show their learning as an animated GIF. Um, they can start in a video, they can start in a presentation, but they have the option to save it as an animated GIF. Um, a roadmap of their learning, and lastly, a podcast. Now, when I say podcast, what they're gonna do is it's actually gonna be living inside of the video or the presentation format, but they can record their voice, add all kinds of things to make it a polished podcast. So these are just some ideas that you can consider and that you can show your students. So I also linked in here a couple of examples from TikTok that I found. Um, and with the uh, EDU tech wizard, he did an activity where um, he recorded himself like that he was inside of the book. Um, which I thought was a pretty unique idea. Um, one thing that I do stress, especially even if your students are in secondary, um, have them download the Canva app on their phones because if they do like a short video clip for a project or they're taking pictures with their phones, it's much easier to get that content inside of Canva when they have it through the mobile app. Um, for younger students, if you're doing something as a class, then the teacher can have those things in there. Um, the other option that I saw that was pretty cool was the guy was talking about um, how you could do a presentation or a video about an ordinary object. That would be a fun one um, to get them to learn different techniques. Um, but there's tons of ideas that are out there on TikTok if you're looking for some other examples. Um, I have had a few teachers in the district that have already reached out and let me know how they are giving students some creation opportunities. And uh, Andy Rotes over at Edgewood in sixth grade social studies, um, and he, it's not just him who does this project. He shares it out with his team. I know that even Kitley is aware of it as well. Um, when the students have to show what they know about the enlightenment and revolution, um, about those time periods, he has a rubric that really gives specific guidelines on what he's asking the students to show 
but it's going to be in the form of a magazine and these come out really cool and they said that the kids absolutely love working on them. You know, think about this versus saying, you know, create a two or three slide presentation. Um, this is really tapping into things that students love. Um, Dahlia Cirilla, who is uh, second grade reach over at South Creek, you had her uh, second graders use the video option to create book trailers. Um, and you'll get a link to this presentation as well, um, but you can actually see how students uh, created one for the one and only Ivan. So that's just a couple ideas um, to get you thinking. Um, Amanda Hodge, who teaches true crime and English 11 at the high school, um, students have done a poster project um, for either one of those classes. And so I wanted you to kind of see a few examples of what's out there. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you all of that is so that it can kind of get your brain going so that you can really be thinking hard about um, opportunities that you can give kids. My goal in doing this PD is that I hope to generate even more examples so that we can share out throughout the district and beyond um, ways that Canva can be used by students in the classroom. Now in this PD, this last section, I went ahead and I prepared kind of a condensed version of Canva, um, you know, in a nutshell. Um, for people that still say, but I want to know how to use Canva, I need the very bare bone basics to get me going. So um, let me go ahead and kind of deep dive into that. So when you go out to the homepage of Canva, it can look overwhelming. So I tried to break down the categories of what I do when I go out there. Um, so over here in the corner, um, this is gonna show because it has the FT in the corner, it's gonna tell me that I'm logged into Canva through our district because we do have it connected to our Google accounts. Um, another place to check is on the other side and notice that it also lists Franklin Township over here. So those are the first two things that you wanna do whenever you're checking. Um, also, whenever I'm ready to start making something, this is the area that I start typing. They do have quick links to different options and even the options are listed across here. But a lot of times I, in my brain, I start typing out what I'm doing and then it will then direct me to templates that I can use. I really don't ever start with a blank page. I usually start with a template and then I start to remix. Um, just so that you're aware, um, whenever you open up that home screen, if you have been making any projects, which you can see some of mine, um, this is where they're going to be listed. Again, this is just in a nutshell for those people that are saying, I need a little bit more information. Once you get into the platform itself, um, I wanted people to know in a nutshell, you're gonna be using that black sidebar and I've tried to give you a breakdown of what each one of these items mean because when we see design, you might not know what that means. So I tried to give it to you in a shorter format. So design means templates, elements is where you find graphics, photos, video, audio, T, text, text boxes, and what I call word art. Brand is gonna be like all of our brand logos, hex codes and images. Uploads is where you can upload any of your media. There's a drawing tool um, that you can do any type of animations. Projects is where you can pull items from existing projects that you have. And then at the bottom, apps is really, a, it's an area once you get more familiar with Canva that you'll spend more time in. And it's where they have third party apps. Now on this next slide, all it is is it's a animation of me literally going through each one of these things. So you're gonna see me click on each one so you can actually see what it does. So if just getting the keyword isn't enough for you, I wanted you to have that as an option as well. So customizing in Canva, um, and I'm not gonna play my video. Um, you guys can watch it since I'm gonna share the presentation. But I'm basically walking you through demonstrating every time that you add an image um, or a video or a picture, 
everything that you're going to use to customize is going to be along the white bar. So it was easier for me to record a short video just on that piece so that you knew what it was. So know that in Canva, I focus on the black sidebar and the white bar to customize. So those are basically the two zones that I tell people when I'm getting used to using it. Um, I always love a good shortcut. I feel like other people do as well. Um, I even have this printed out and in my office because I forget for t from time to time what these shortcuts do. Um, if your students are using Canva, this can actually be really helpful for them as well. Um, so again, the whole gist of doing this presentation was giving you kind of a launch pad of where to get started with thinking about using Canva as the core creation tool. All right?